Ciao a tutti and welcome to Venice Talks, a podcast series about Venice in Italy. My name is Monica Cesarato and I am a Venetian food and travel blogger. I'm going to put my insider knowledge at your disposal to help you discover Venice at 360 degrees. Each week I will be chatting to the people who really matter, the Venetian. So follow me on the discovery of his artisans, writers, fashion designers, artists, glass makers, bloggers and much much more. Come to visit Venice the right and sustainable way. You can find me on my blog www.monicacesarato.com and also on all social media. Enjoy the episode! Welcome back to Venice Talks, episode number 36. Hi everybody and welcome back to Venice Talks. Today my special guest is a very dear friend. Um, she has one of the hidden gems in Venice. It is Maria Gabriella Emiliani from Antichita I Ghetto. Ciao carissima, how are you? Ciao Monica, I'm very good, thank you. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. And hi also to Nina, your daughter, but I know she's in the background somewhere playing, I hope. Hopefully, <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, so let's start by explaining what Antichita Ghetto is. Okay, so uh, Antichita Ghetto, as the name says, it's uh, an antique store mm -hmm. in, in the heart of the Jewish ghetto of mm -hmm. Venice. And we've been owning this, uh, this store for almost 20 years now. So, oh, wow. Yeah, okay. they, I think because first it were, it were my parents, they opened mm -hmm. it uh, first, like it, it was 2005, 2006, more or less. So yeah, we're getting closer to the 20th anniversary of our mm. store. Cool. And, uh, and yes, our store, we host many, I would say many precious things. I mean, in my opinion, of course. Oh, no, no, you do. Okay, so let's start from the beginning. So yeah. your, first of all, the location. I got to say, I say it's a hidden gem because uh, you're in the middle of a ghetto, but also it, it is a hidden gem. It really is because uh, your store's got this uh, basket. You still got the baskets outside of flowers, yes? Always, definitely. Okay, Some and... I always say when I stop with uh, guests or with friends or whatever, for me, you're not an antique store. You're just a little museum because the way you display all your antiques with all the, um, you know, the labels and the script, the description, everything, it is like walking into a little museum. Grazie. Thank you so much. You're very, very kind. Grazie. <laughs> and uh, so you, let's start the, by talking about the location. Your building is one of the oldest buildings in the city, right? Yes, definitely. And I actually have something to say about it because when my parents first did the uh, restoration works, because, you know, before before being a store, it was just kind of a storage place. Ah, okay. It was, yeah. yeah, it was empty. It was very dirty and full of rats, pantegane, mm -hmm. as we say in mm -hmm. Oh, 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 God. oh, proper rats. Oh, oh, you're talking about ma big mice. Ah, okay, right. I thought, oh, I oh, gosh. Huge oh, rats, God. yes. Oh, God, oh, God. But we yeah. had to do some work uh, to, to, to make it accessible. Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. And when, and they had to stop the work for uh, kind of for a few months because they needed to call uh, a team of archaeologists Okay. Because I found out that in there, there was one of the earliest foundry of the ghetto. Because as you know, yeah. or, or maybe I don't know if your public knows, but... Well, we, we, we might tell them again, okay, mm -hmm. that the ghetto is the first ever ghetto and the word ghetto comes from the foundries of Venice. Exactly, yes. Because from the action of throwing the met melted metal into the molds, Mm -hmm. And in Venetian is ghetto, and then the German uh, Jewish couldn't pronounce it, they call it ghetto. Yes. But yours was one of the original foundries. Oh one, my God. one of a very, very super old one. Okay, what what uh, what uh, period are we talking about? What year are we talking about, more or less? I think we're thinking of talking about the 15th century, something like that. 15th or maybe 16th century, 16th century, I'd say. Okay. Like yeah. Yeah, yeah, so it's very, very old. And then after they had studied the place, uh, they gave us permission to open mm -hmm. it. And um, so, yes, it's for sure one of the oldest building in, in I would say, in the ghetto and maybe also, who knows, maybe in Venice yeah. as well. It's like Aladdin's cave in a little bit. I mean, when you walk in, yeah. it does feel like Aladdin's cave. 
<laughs> yeah, we try. I mean, uh, it's something that actually we, we, we've been uh, told a lot. And also they, they either say, okay, it's like a museum, it's like a cave, Aladdin's cave, or it really feels warm like home. And for us, it is our second home, for sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're always there. Yes, it, it's true. I think you spend more time in the shop than you actually <laughs> spend it. Oh, my <laughs> daughter, as you know, she was raised there. We <laughs> yes. had the playpen there. I know, I remember, I remember. She was a toddler and I remember. I remember. I bet you, instead of actually like all the other kids playing with normal toys, as you were giving her all antiques exactly. you, know. <laughs> yes. you have the first taste of it exactly. <laughs> so in what kind of a tea you actually go you specialize because there are other antique shops in venice it's not you're not the only one but yeah. you're specifying in two main things right oh yes yeah we have i would say like four maybe five um uh, spe specifically i don't know how to say oh that. okay I, I knew the two okay so it's more than two well, for okay. example yeah for sure like judaica because since yep. we are in the jewish ghetto so jewish items for mm -hmm. i don't know what judaica is and uh also micro mosaic yeah uh, we've been we got passionate about micro mosaic micro mosaic is an art that actually was born first in rome mm -hmm. and in like about 16th 17th century something like mm -hmm. that and then it spread to the rest of Italy and it arrived also in Venice of course so yeah. and of course in Venice because of the um of Murano glass for oh, yes it kind of thrived in a way because it's uh, so particular as well isn't it exactly so they had they knew how to blow glass they knew how to make these very tiny micro tiles that composed micro mosaic so but let, let's be clear about this because i know what you're talking about and i know how incredible it is we are talking about little i mean little depiction of images but i'm talking about really small that has been done all with these micro tassels right mm -hmm. exactly and people like to I mean, I don't even know because I can't, I mean, I'm half blind, so I can't see things. They actually had to, well, first to prepare the tassels, right? Yes, it was so hard, I guess, to get the perfect color that you wanted, the shades, and I, I, I don't know how they did, I don't know. And then put it together. I mean, doing mosaics on its own, it's an art, but my, micro mosaics, and you were explaining to me the many times that I see you, that is an art that at least in Italy, or at least from Venice, doesn't exist anymore, does it? Because uh, they don't produce the tassels, right? Am mm -hmm. I correct? Mm -hmm. oh, I'm not 100% sure now that oh. we're actually talking about it, because, as you know, we have Orsoni, who is a uh, okay. very famous uh, glass making manufacturers, very close to our store, actually. And mm -hmm. they uh, make uh, either um, mosaic, material mm -hmm. but not micro mosaic yeah that's what i'm saying no no i'm talking about the micro mosaic of course the mosaics they make in materials not... yeah no but yeah. they also make like because there are so many micro mosaicists i don't know mm -hmm. if that's the right word in english but it actually go to or sony to buy to supply get supply for them oh, okay so work. maybe so. maybe they buy the, uh, the tassels and then they broke break them into pieces to get them tiny as they need yeah yeah i think okay. so yes okay yes. okay 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 but it's amazing the collection you had also because every year for the venice class week usually you you pile up a, a, a beautiful display mm -hmm. and you have a, you do this beautiful catalog with all these descriptions and so much work you put into it maria gabriella really is a lot of work yeah it is but it actually uh, it, it gives satisfaction to be able to transmit to spread our passion to mm -hmm. other people because it's something micro mosaics are is, is an art that got lost for a while i mean it was very very famous back in 19th century mm -hmm. and day by day year by year uh, i don't know the decrease was considered sort of a poor art mm -hmm. in these last years and we would like to think that also we contributed to, to this um it's already, it's again, uh, very in fashion. So there are oh. so many collectors. And also, I have to say, being completely honest, the price of antiques, micro mosaics, mm. just uh, went to the top, went to the roof. 
Yes. Okay, but it's not good for you because you're looking no. to go and <laughs> praise them and then sell them. But it's good exactly. for whoever owns them. And thank you to you, our own one too now. <laughs> but I finally, finally, you saw me the other day. I finally managed to go around because I was so worried I was going to lose it because very kindly, um, Maria Gabriela and her family a couple of years ago for my birthday gave me this beautiful necklace with this beautiful micro, micro mosaic. And I couldn't wear it because unfortunately the um, closure of the back mm -hmm. wasn't, uh, I don't know, it, it was the original one, but somehow maybe when they designed it wasn't the safe so at least twice I actually nearly lost <sighs> it uh, thank god I'm the kind of person that plays a lot with necklaces okay so my hand is always there so I literally fell they fell in on my neck and I wasn't pulling it it just literally fell on my neck. <laughs> oh for, thank god yeah, but now I fixed yeah. it so it's perfect it's perfect, perfect. So listen, so you do micro mosaics, you do ju Judaica, that mm -hmm. is, as you were mentioning before, is, uh, is it's not jewelry, it's more like uh, accessories, or is it exactly. also jewelry as well? Mm, no, not so much. It's actually uh, like Jewish ritual uh, okay. items that, okay. that can actually, that, that can e either be used for, as I said, right? Mm -hmm. So for uh, Havdala, Shabbat, and so on. So we have candlesticks. So we have mm -hmm. that they are the Torah pointer to read the Torah without touching the book and so on. And or they can also be like um, daily uh, daily use items. For example, mm -hmm. uh, we have a very big collection of Hamsa. Hamsa is the okay. It's a Hamsa means hand or fire. okay. Um, it's a common. It's an amulet, first of all. Okay. Yeah. And it's a common symbol both for the uh, Muslim and mm -hmm. for the Jewish people. For the Muslim mm -hmm. is the hand of Fatima, so as everybody you knows, and for the Jewish people is the hand of Miriam. So it's um, and people use it as a ta as an amulet for protection okay. against the evil eye. Okay. And, and so we have a very big collection of, of it, and people either wear it as um, jewelry, as you were mm -hmm. saying, but also they put it in their house they hang it on the wall okay so okay that's just an example mm -hmm. and then you also uh, as if i remember you also collect uh, uh, fabrics oh yeah fabrics uh mostly we try okay from venice but uh -huh. lately because my mother got so passionate about those okay uh, we starting we started collecting antiques textile and fabrics from either all over Italy or ah. just other places. Yeah, we, we are expanding. Okay. The okay. Range of the store because. Well, it makes sense. I mean, you got amazing stuff. I know you also got pictures. You got loads of other things. What is, uh, um, would you by heart know your oldest piece? Uh, right now, we have, yeah, we have, because we also have uh, glassware from Murano, of course. And uh -huh. uh, now we have, to I don't know if I, the pronunciation is gonna be right. You were so E W E R S. So you know mm -hmm. to keep um, um, in this case they were liturgic, so probably used in church. Okay. And they date back to 17th century Murano. Oh wow! Okay. I think that's the oldest item we have right now. Okay. So how? exciting easy whenever you or your parents find something you know maybe in some I, I know that you don't you also go to the proper auction but also you go around the markets and trying to find how, how exciting easy when you find something totally unexpected and you go like oh my god oh my god no, <laughs> people maybe don't realize how important it is it is because you first have a feeling when you see something precious you just have like okay that piece there is telling me something even if you don't know anything mm -hmm. about it yet and so you just buy by impulse i'd say and then you start researching and studying it and you look at it and you clean like, it clean it clean it uh, you really cherish it you, you treat it like it was a part of the family uh -huh. And then you find out like it's something super rare or super precious and yeah, it really pull our hearts. Um, it's the exciting part of the job, I'd say. Mm. And so explain me something. I know obviously you got into it because of your parents, but you could have easily gone and done another job. 
Okay. So how? I wasn't meant to. I wasn't meant to actually. You were meant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's hear it then. Okay. Let's see this. So, uh, yeah, I have a master degree in Mandarin Chinese. Ah, okay. Totally, totally, totally another thing. Okay. Totally, completely another thing. Yeah, exactly. And um, in law and business of China. Okay. And, uh, I actually started working for the uh, Kafuska University, so Venice University for a while. I had this very super teacher, but I, so, uh, I say hi to him. I don't know whether he, he may, might be listening to it. And um, yeah, so my life was meant to be related at least uh, to China. I don't know if I was meant to go live there, but mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, as a very good daughter that I am, I started to help my parents, you know, in my free time because mm -hmm. yeah, it was a good thing to do. And it grew under my skin, really. Mm. Day by day, I felt that my heart was yeah, meant to be there because every time I went to bed at night, uh, my head was in the store. You were and thinking I, of, of what can yeah. I do? Whoa, that's so cool. Yeah, I wonder what they saw today, what they found today, who, with whom they spoke today. Because Also because your family is not from Venice itself. No. You, you come from outside of Venice, like me. Yes. Okay. okay. So it must have been already uh, challenging as well to fit into the city and to gain to something this job that uh, you know you say you kind of got drawn into it but it wasn't what you wanted to do originally it must have been so I mean challenging at first yeah I think the the biggest challenge was for my parents saying the truth when they first opened mm. the store because you as you may know the Venetian community can be mm. either be really welcoming but sometimes they can also be quite close they're island mm -hmm. people uh, yeah. So you know, they, and they're really jealous of this. Well, let's say, let's say, I think you have to earn your place in Venice. Yes, exactly. I yeah, mm. that, I agree with uh, with this. So at first, the people were kind of, you know, uh, I wouldn't say suspicious, but at the same time, they, they were curious, but they didn't want to show it. Yeah. So yeah, they were passing by, picking through, picking inside. And day by day, year by year, we conquer their trust. Yeah. And uh, so no, now also Venetian people really love to mm. come in our store and we're really happy with it. Also, because I got to say, you have transformed a lot through the years. I remember passing about 15 years ago and he has changed. He has, uh, I don't know, he has grown. I mean, not as in size, of course, but mm -hmm. he kind of have, um, he bloomed, I think. Yes, it is. I don't know. He's evolved. He's brighter. It's uh, he's got his personality. He's totally. I, I repeat, uh, your shop for me is not just an antique shop. It is a, a co. I don't know an alcove. I don't know even know how to explain. <laughs> it's, it's just it oozes out the personality. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Okay. I don't know if I mean you're inside, so obviously you see me as uh, you know uh, living there every day. I'm telling mm -hmm. you as a, as an outsider, okay. That's the feeling I get every time I walk. I'm drawn, even though I'm not a lover of I'm a lover. It's not. I'm I'm not connoisseur of no, it. I'm literally drawn into it. And whenever I pass with people, rarely, rarely I've got people say to me, "Oh no, but I'm not interesting." They will go like, "Do you want to go in?" Oh yeah, please. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad our passion can actually uh, permeate, can permeate through our items and things. And yeah, we put a lot of time, a lot of efforts, but it's something we really love. Love. We are so lucky doing this because when you love doing what you're doing, what could you ask more? I mean. And another thing I want to know, the research, how long does it take? I mean, because you got so many different kind of items, are you specific, um, specific is any, every member of a family, you know, specifying <laughs> in something so the way you, is easier for you to do the research? Um, I'd say I am the, uh, the, uh, the one that actually operate most of the research because I'm okay. I, I, I became quite good. In mm -hmm. years doing that, I know what the keywords, for example, are to look for, or uh, I got, you know, yeah, oh no, I got the eye. And then uh, both, maybe I'd say my parents, maybe they have their experience, for mm -hmm. sure, that helps them. 
and they have their studies as well. So when, when they were younger, they studied so much. And they, they did, I mean, they were, they were also, they were, they have been passionate about antiques for so many years before opening the, the store. They were medical doctors before. Yeah, exactly. Because they were an antique dealers to start with. But they exactly. did something totally different. They, they actually opened it for passion. That is what sometimes I think is uh, is amazing when people start going through this, uh, the road. And yeah, they were crazy, in my opinion, because they... <laughs> Their life is crazy. Well, it's not No, 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 Lazar. Maria Gabriela, wrong no. word. It's not crazy. It's called visionary. No, I'm telling right. you this. Uh, Marisa that's told right. me this is from Marisa Convento. Marisa always tells me when you know when I come up with my pie idea, you know me and my yeah. ideas and so on. You know, and lately she doesn't go anymore. Oh, none of my friends anymore go like, oh my god, you're crazy. She goes like, okay, when are you gonna do this? <laughs> <laughs> the other day I said to her, you don't think I'm crazy? Oh no, Monica, you're visionary. Okay, I like that. So yeah, yeah. that's perfect. Your parents are visionary, that's why. Yeah, they were visionary. Okay. Listen, and what about the most beautiful girl in Venice? Is Nina coming towards the dark side of antiques? Uh, I, oh, well, I don't want, you know, to impose anything on her. She's no. going to take well, it. She's got she's fashion. Bad. Okay. First of all, your daughter has got fashion sense since she was born. Okay. Yeah, she doesn't look like my daughter because you, you, people don't, <laughs> cannot look at me right now. Thank God. Because <laughs> right now, but she's she, so freaking fashionable. Like. She is. I mean, I remember who was she? One and a half, two. I mean, as, as soon as she started walking, she was going around Venice and it was like, oh my God. I think she's going to develop uh, the fashion side of your antique shop. Maybe yeah, she's going to sure. come up finding all the, you know, vintage and antique clothing or something, costumes. I can just see her doing that. Yeah, it's very likely jewelry, jewelry. So. Oh, jewelry. Oh, she's into jewelry. She's, she's so oh. much into jewelry. Yeah. Well, you got, I mean, I got to say, you got some beautiful, beautiful uh, antique jewelry in, in your uh, in your shop. So some amazing earrings uh, that are so sometimes that you have. Is, and I, I mean, I wonder, do you have actually have pieces just from Italy or from all over the world? Mm, from all over, I'd say Europe. Europe. We talk about jewelry, like gold and precious and semi-precious stones. Yeah. Let's say uh, Europe. And mm -hmm. uh, when we talk about other things, as I was saying before, for example, the Hamsa, that that's mm -hmm. a Jewish amulet, uh, they also come from North Africa, for example. So it depends, oh, it depends okay. on the items. Yeah. Okay. And obviously, you got a website. Do you also sell online or not? Okay. That's uh, um, it's not a hard question, but okay. We rather, we rather like not to sell online i know it's mm -hmm. kind of it goes against the uh um, no it's uh, it's choices and i understand in your case why you might not want because to do it. yeah since we're selling antiques we rather prefer people to have the chance to see with their eyes what they're, what they're buying everything but but uh, the times are um we have to go forward but we cannot ignore the modernity and so on so we very often we're asked to sell things online so I try to take as many pictures as mm. possible oh and you're amazing I've got to say you're really good at taking them very you go <laughs> really true. well you do you really go into the so details well you do Marie Carmela, because you really take it, um, the details you're very careful with the details and with the lighting and you know when you it's sell something I guess it's important it's it is important. very important and I love it because you're very active on social medias and uh, on Twitter thankfully because so many people don't use Twitter said you do and you always always give a little bit of history of the piece you're always explaining your always um, you know guys that you need to follow her because she's so good she really is really really good listen um, I'm uh, blushing just that you said no that. stop it okay <laughs> listen 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 I want to know if somebody all over the world whatever has got some particular requirement. Can he just write to you and say, look, I'm looking for this kind of thing. Is there something you do for, for clients? Uh, not actually, because it 
takes uh, I mean I mean uh, you mean that he, he can write us and ask us to search for a particular thing? No 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 to it? say if you got it oh, and no, for if sure, you for haven't sure, got yes. it to keep an eye just in case when you go no, around. No 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 yes that, that happens all the time we receive okay. thousands of emails every day. So yeah okay. that's something we do. It sometimes people ask us ask us for you know assessments, evaluation mm -hmm. or yeah please could you please look for me this specific piece if you you know stumble upon it. No, assessment and evaluation is not something we do or okay. looking specifically for something that we don't have at the moment. Okay, but okay. We keep an eye open, of course. If yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, then I assume you go regular clients as well, then, you know, that you deal yeah, with. We, we, you, we need to, econ I don't know how do you say, economize. Uh, okay, no, to, our time to, to, to keep, to, yeah, no, well, yeah, to keep the, the cost down and to keep your time. Uh, of the best uh, it's, it's yeah. a problem of time mostly yeah yes yeah. yeah yeah of course also because you got a child that you got to you know every so often take care of <laughs> yeah, sometimes you know <laughs> when i remember yeah. so, so are you open every day or do you have days off like people should <laughs> no we uh until now we've been we kept the store open every day because we are in three so we're able to alternate ourselves. And so we, we're not always in three opening the store, mm -hmm. of course. Yeah, of course. Not only me, sometimes only my parents. Otherwise, if we would be always together, we would kill each other. Oh, yeah, that's what, that's one thing I wanted to ask you, but then I, I refrain from saying <laughs> about, working <laughs> with, about working with mom and dad, you know, all the time, you know. But at least you got living uh, uh, um, babysitters. <laughs> Except, no, no, yeah, especially when Nina was, you know, she was a Little. newborn. Yeah. Yeah. Thank God my parents were there. Maybe they weren't actually actively helping me keeping her, you know, but they were there opening yeah. the store. I couldn't go there because she yeah. was small and everything. Yeah, so. yeah, I remember. I, I mean, she had a little pen at the back. <laughs> exactly. No, we, we are a good team, I have to say. We don't, we almost never fight. Almost. Oh, that's and, good. And line, almost. But no, okay, no. Okay, okay, between me and you. Who do we owe this to? Your mom and dad, yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, because they are so nice and calm. <laughs> That's another thing when you walk into your shop, if your mom and dad are there. But the place is just so peaceful. It's so calm. Out of, you know, I'm a very loud person. And I told you, every time I walk into your shop, all of a sudden, I, my, I become quiet. <laughs> Above all, if your dad is around, I, I kind of feel ashamed of me being so loud. <laughs> so, so, so soft because I'm thinking, oh my God, I'm going to break something. <laughs> no, no, no. Everybody is welcome. Loud people, quiet people, everybody is welcome. Yeah, for no. sure. No, no, we're not that kind of store. Our door is always open. We don't have, for example, the, you know, many antique store, they mm -hmm. have a. Uh, a bell to ring yeah. to get inside. We don't have it. Anybody can come inside anytime they want. Well, but I think it's, it's also point. because the way you've, um, you see, they, when I was trying to say that it looks like a museum, it's because of the way you display things and the way you can walk around and you can see everything i mean i walked uh, and gone to places you know antique shops and it's like walking into somebody's wardrobe you know every everything <laughs> is piled there and you got to rummage to try to find things yours is literally you see everything and you can spend hours in your shop for that reason because everything is displayed by the time you read the description by the time you look at the details and then you go oh look look at that it's uh it's uh aladdin's cave uh, I and it looks like aladdin's cave as well because you got all the gold and stuff <laughs> right maria gabriella one little question about venice instead since okay. uh, you live right in the ghetto so mm -hmm. yes correct. what uh, how long have you been living there for uh we've been here for almost let's say uh, the 20 25 years okay so i mean i usually ask this question to all the venetians um you know who live uh, in, living in venice itself um how has it changed for you in the last 20 years what what's the biggest things that you've seen changing in venice uh it's not necessarily a good thing no no no, no. it doesn't have to be no no i'm just saying no, no, no. And, and it's not good. i'm not talking about good things i wish there were good things <laughs> uh, no i saw an increasing uh, 
superficial approach mm. to the city, uh, both from tourists and the tourism, I wouldn't say tourists, tourism in general, mm-hmm. and from Venetian as well. It's like they are starting to give up on the city. And it's something that really breaks my heart. Mm. Because um, I think we can still do something. We can still do so many things to keep Venice alive. Yeah. Flourishing. Uh, I don't know whether it was a crisis or something. It's just, I see people are, yeah, they, they, they sort of kind of giving up. And yes, something so, so bad because you cannot give up on a city like this. Yeah. It's yeah. outraging. Yeah. For sure. And since the Venetian first mm. um, have this attitude, yeah. of course, of course, the tourists uh, get it, you know. Yeah, of course. Yeah. They're influenced by this. So, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, t- I totally agree with you. I was talking to uh, the director of Palazzo Grimani a couple of days ago, but uh, mm-hmm. very gladly they said to me they gonna are going to be able to interview them in the next few days. And oh. we, yeah, I'm so happy Where about it because, you know, uh, it's so hard to interview the museums in Venice, uh, you know, uh, know, exactly. Yeah. So I was so happy when they said uh, yes. And we were on the same, uh, you know, on the same level when we were talking about it because she said she was saying exactly the same thing, you know, and I was saying that the problem is because, number one, we're not educated. It's not point to keep talking about over tourism and wanting to limit the number of people coming. We're not going to be able to do that. How do you change, in my opinion, things? Educating people. Exactly. Educating people. Get the, me- the right message across. Show them how much there is to do in a city. Use the media, the social media, the influencer in the right way, not just to do marketing, but to actually teach people. And it, look, if somebody that's got, like, let's say, one million, two million followers, come around and says, you know what, we should do Venetian rowing, we should go do, doing these little museums, we should do this, then people will do them because people listen, unfortunately, but they do. And educating, explaining why. Instead, we just, uh, I don't know, it's, I, I, I'm with you on this. That's why the podcast was born, you know, people say to me, oh, but it takes time. And you're doing such a great work in doing this. So really, uh, thank you. I, I, I'm thanking you on behalf also of my family. Thank you, thank you. No. I just, I just hope I keep forgetting to tell my listeners that uh, when they go to visit the places or see the people that we talk about on the podcast, please do tell the people I've interviewed that you went there because of the podcast. Because unfortunately, we don't. Uh, you know, it's not like a blog when you get to see the numbers on podcast. I only find out if people are actually listening when they tell me otherwise. And I know that it's nice for you guys as well to know that somebody walked into your shop because they heard the interview and we talked about it because they're thinking, oh, okay, then it's worth worth it. It was worth it to talk it, right? Yeah. But but I saw on the map you published that there are so many people listening to your podcast right now all over. I I know. The worst. I mean, Australia. Korea. I was so excited. Korea, yeah, yeah. I want to go to Korea soon. And I was like, oh my God, I got two listeners. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, no, I'm very happy. No, I'm happy because it's really is uh, all over the world and it's nice. So if me, that I'm so little, can can have this reach, can you imagine the city of Venice, a city of Venice? And by using the right uh, channels, what they can do, what they could achieve, but they are not. And it's so sad. I I don't know why. It's it's not even, it's not laziness. I don't know. Maybe they have more important things about the thing. I just think it's not laziness. I just think it's limited mind and is uh, looking at tomorrow, not at uh, as in today and tomorrow, but not in the far future, when instead is making money now, when instead they should reason that if you cultivate, if you educate people, you have money forever because you're teaching. And then if a person comes and has a good time, he's going to tell his family, his kids, his friends, and they will want to do exactly the same thing. I just don't, I don't know, you know, the famous passaparola, you know, word mm-hmm. of mouth. 
I don't know. Oh, well, anyway, listen, I know you got to go and cook for Nina now because I, she was very good. She, we did, we ever heard that. I thought we were going to get she, a little chow No, she passed by actually. She also came here next to do my, uh, okay. they're not focused. So yeah, she was yeah. very silent. I, I want, I wanted a really chow Monica. How are you? <laughs> 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 well, the last time she wouldn't even say hello to me. I mean, I, I mean, she hasn't seen me in such a long time. She probably didn't recognize me. She said, who the hell is that one? That witch. <laughs> no way. <laughs> anyway, Maria Gabriella, where can people, what's your website and your social medias, please? Okay, so we're active on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And you just need to look for Antiquita al ghetto there's a cnh for the key sound mm -hmm. and we also have a website uh, it's www.antiquitaalghetto.com okay all of this will be at the end of the uh, both on my website and also i will repeat it later on Listen, Darley, it was so nice finally talking to you. My <laughs> bad, my bad. I have to say my bad. <laughs> no, you, you're just busy. You're just busy. You're just busy. And I know you're very busy. And I'll speak to you soon. And I'll pop in to see you soon as uh, soon as I go a minute. And uh, I'm pretty sure you will, hear, you will hear from me from some other crazy ideas. You know me. You're the first one that I usually write to. Anyway. I look forward to it. For sure. I'm into it. Yes. Okay. Take me aboard. Okay. Speak to you soon. Ciao, Cara. Ciao. Yes. Goodbye to everyone. Ciao. 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 Thank you so much, Maria Gabriella. It was a lovely chat. You can find Maria Gabriella and her family at www.antiquitaalghetto.com and on all social medias as Antiquita Al Ghetto. Thank you again for listening. If you want to book a food tour or a cooking experience with me, you can find me on my blog www.monicacesarato.com or at cookingvenice.com and also on all social medias with the handle at Monica Cesarato and at Cooking Venice. Feel free to leave a comment or write to info at monicacesarato.com for more information about the people featured in the podcast or Venice. Bye bye!